And thank you very much for joining me here yet again on a very special episode of Ready, Set, Test. Today we are looking at something that hasn't been launched yet commercially, a pre-production review, so to say. As you must have seen from my previous videos on this channel, I'm a big fan of Artbird FPV products to the point that I've actually bought some of them and my biggest purchase has been the Arcbird 2.0 Autopilot that lives in my FX61 Phantom and I have done more than 35 up to 40 FPV flights with it and I've been fairly pleased, detailed review of which is already present on my channel. Now Arcbird got in touch with me and wanted to know if I can have a look at or beta test their new product, an antenna tracker. To be very precise, a mini antenna tracker or as you can see on the box in here so obviously very excited I said yes and today just about two hours ago I received this product I wanted to put a video out there just to give you a quick introduction of what this product actually is and what the dimensions and sizes involved in this are and why me personally I think that this could be a game changer for the FPV game for the FPV section of flying providing that a few things fall right in place so let's dive deep into it, but I'm not going to do any unboxing or anything like that, as you know beforehand. This is the box that came into it. It's a signature output box, fairly nice and decent. It was all protected, nicely done, had no problems with it whatsoever. What else came in my package? Now, you've got to understand that being a pre-production product, I don't necessarily know whether what I have, you will have too. But I'm fairly certain that you will have these wires in here that came with it. This is a wire which is the most important and the interesting one. That will go to your monitor. This will go to your 3S cell, which is what it runs on, by the way. And this will go to your antenna tracker itself. Arcbird has also been very kind to send me the airside module. Now, remember, I said that I have the Arcbird 2.0 autopilot, which means I technically don't need this. This unit automatically connects with the Artbird Autopilot 2.0 and works, so it doesn't need this. But what if you really like the idea of this product, and I would, you would really like to have this small and light auto antenna tracker, but you do not have an Artbird 2.0. Maybe you have some other autopilot system, or maybe you don't have one. When that is where this little airside module comes in. As I understand, this will not be sold with the product, but it will be sold as an optional extra. Considering their prices on their current sensor optional extras, I would say this will be very reasonably priced. You can actually wire this up with its own GPS unit and then wire it to your camera and video transmitter and you'll be good to go. This unit will start tracking this little unit in the air. So you won't need to have an Arcbird 2.0 to do it, but if you have an Arcbird 2.0, then you won't need this. In a future episode, I would like to also show how this thing is wired up just for example purpose. But for the time being, as I said, since I have an Arcbird 2.0, this unit will work with it automatically. Now, let's just quickly go into the unit and see what that is all about. As you can see in here, this is a small unit. And I will try to put some light on this for you because being small, focusing might be an issue. This is the main housing of the unit. This here is a servo up top is another servo and right up on the head of it is an arcbird 5.8 gigahertz double biquad antenna now these words are where the whole thing lies it says 5.8 gigahertz biquad antenna well why does it say 5.8 gigahertz because you know until now the auto antenna trackers that we've had in the market, and Arcbird makes a big one of this as well, you affixed your own video receiver to it, and then you put your own antenna to it. But in this case, and that is what's special about this, this unit here is also a 5.8 gigahertz 40 channel video receiver. Okay, this is also a video receiver. It's not just an antenna tracker, it's also a video receiver, which means this bi-quad antenna up here is a 5.8 gigahertz bi-quad antenna. Now, there might be questions out there. Why would you need an antenna tracker for a 5.8 gigahertz frequency? Because antenna tracker is usually used by serious FPV pilots who use 1.2 gigahertz or other different frequencies that gives them more range. Well, for two reasons, in my opinion, 5.8 gigahertz is a cheap frequency, very reasonable products to be bought on that frequency. That's number one. And number two, it's very versatile, it's available to all of us, 
and it's also very clean not a lot of transmission issues within 5.8 gigahertz it's a clean frequency so why not take advantage of that for example my sky zone goggles in here with this little uh, scoop planar antenna and with my homemade helical antenna I can get up to four kilometers with this no problem but then because of my head shaking and because I can't sit stand still in one place for a long time I start losing video signal and that is exactly where this neat little new product comes in this will make sure that the tracking is done remember that helical antenna that I showed you is only 9 dBi this is 12 dBi and with the tracking I'm only guessing in here but from my experience I would say this will take your 5.8 gigahertz craft up to the limits of seven maybe seven and a half kilometers maybe even more on a good day and that is serious FPV flying even on 5.8 gigahertz so you won't need to go into 1.2 gigahertz when you can fly that far and to be honest I don't think and as far as I am concerned I need to fly further than that but that story aside let's go back to the auto antenna tracker now before I go and show you the size of this I would like to delve into it and show you what is in the front as you can see, there's three little buttons saying channel calibration and offline and then there's two lights saying home and video the light on the right is green the light on the left is red I will give it some power in a minute and show you how it is right up top is this little screen in here it's like the old tube light screens it has basically uh, uh, a diagram number which can show 0 to 9 or A B C D E F. this is where it will show you the channel number and the band number when you select it of course in the next video I will show you how to select channel and how to get picture on your monitor onto the side is the connection for the biquad antenna coming in and right on top of it there are three pins which is where the power will go now remember it will go in a very specific way and the the names are written here I'm trying to focus for you excuse me right as focus camera focus right right on top it says ground in the middle it says 12 volt and at the bottom it says video and this is how you're going to plug it in output will already provide you with a wire that will do that for you okay now that's your main unit obviously on the back there is nothing this being the idea that this will be stuck to your viewing unit and the two servos are powered in here let me also go into a little bit more detail regarding these here this servo spins on its own axis and then does on its own axis as well these are aluminium and they are fairly strong these things are fairly strong as far as I can press them so are these little bits in here these are all built aluminium so that's a good sign the antenna up front is slightly soft plastic but not soft enough to be bumped in this is quite strong in its own place as well and as I said about the back of it obviously there was a question that what do you do with the back of this unit so let's just say this is the shell or the carcass of a hobby king uh, quantum uh, FPV goggles so if you were to take this for example this is where I usually mount my 5.8 gigahertz receiver and if you were to put some velcro or some kind of a strong material in here and plant it right about here this would not make for a bad connection let me put up the camera and show you how it will look see it can be right at the front of your goggles and considering that it has a 5.8 gigahertz receiver built in you don't need the receiver and it's only 115 between 115 and 120 grams so the weight difference is very negligible so that could be a very good viewing point in fact that's what I'm planning on doing hopefully for my flights and now let's come down to the actual size comparison part and I want to use something very universal to do that and I think there's one thing that can be found almost anywhere is a good old can of coke let's measure the size in comparison to the can of coke now, if I put the can of coke in here like this check this out the whole unit is as tall as a 330 milliliter can of coke and let's do another comparison here is the side comparison with the can of coke 
here's the bottom. The bi-quad antenna itself is just short of the length of a can of Coke. Now you see why this could be a game changer. It's because of its extreme compact size when it comes to antenna tracker. I haven't seen an antenna tracker this small so far. They have been really big objects for the time being. So this will be very interesting to see how that works out. And obviously, in the next video, I will show you how to get your channels set in on this screen in here and also how to calibrate this baby because this has an inertial internal compass and it needs to be calibrated in order to be pointing towards the plane. Now, here's the interesting thing. I've already powered this and I've already powered my FX61 Phantom, which is sitting over there. That already has an Aukbert 2.0 in it. And this thing powered up and within about five minutes, it started pointing towards the plane. As I said, it's meant to communicate with the Aukbert 2.0 but I will show you the calib calibration nonetheless. So without further ado, let's give this thing some power and see how it looks like when it's powered up. Now I'm going to take these pins in here and because the ground is up top, I'm going to turn it around being ground up top and put it into this little part here. Just to show you how it's gone through. Okay, and now we're going to put this down on the ground. And this little part goes into the balance lead of the battery. Plug it in there. And it's plugged in. That's it. Now, you see the 9 in there? Why is it showing 9? Because that is exactly where my video transmitter signal was being received. That's where I got the clear signal. So once you save it, it will start on that one. And the button for home is flashing because right now it's not communicating with anything. And for the, the, the light for video is completely on because it's not getting any video. I mean, just to give you an example of how this thing moves, I'm going to press the offline button. There's the movement around the axis of it. You can have an idea. Just a little bit of a demonstration of how this thing moves. I'll put it straight on the ground let it catch its bearings. Remember, it's not in tracking mode right now. There it is. Just to give you an idea of the movement, it's not communicating with anything right now, so it's just moving around looking for it. I'm going to press it in offline again, and it will just stand like this. So here we are. This was the ArcBird Mini Auto Antenna Tracker. It's been a bit of a long video for an introduction, but I wanted to show everyone what this thing is, what the size is, what the weight is, what the advantages are. And once launched into the market, hopefully within a reasonable price bracket, it can be a game changer. I personally believe that it will do to antenna trackers what the Fat Shark goggle did to monitors. It could do that. Every 5.8 gigahertz flyer could have their own little mini HR antenna tracker actually posted on their goggles. This is where we're heading with this one. But for now, this is a very exciting product. And as usual, I will be thorough and I will be detailed. There are more videos to come. I intend to make at least another three videos about this product where we will first start by calibrating ground maintenance and actually connecting it to your aircraft, getting your channel sorted out and making sure that you got the right channel to fly the airplane with. And then hopefully in the th third video, we will use this product to communicate with my FX61 and find out how this actually tracks. And in order to find out the tracking capacity of this item, I have a very neat idea in my mind and we will work on that. For the time being, thank you very much for Arcbert sending this product down to me to beta test it and beta test I will. Thank you very much guys. If you've been anticipating this product, stay tuned. You will have more videos. Subscribe, comment and like if this video has been of any use. If you have any questions regarding that, if you want to ask me anything that I can test on your behalf, that's what I'm here for, please do. Thank you very much for joining me once again and I will see you in the next video. Bye.